Hello everyone, this is Toby again from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we're going to be sketching a little village scene from Wheat Hampstead which is in Hertfordshire. Um, I like Wheat Hampstead because uh, the bakery called Loafing Bakery which is just featured in this uh, video is a delicious. Um, me and my friend went cycling there one weekend and had some really tasty pastry from them. And B, they've commissioned a couple of things from me, including a coffee cup design. So, of course, I therefore love them. Um, the the reference for today should be up here. And there's links links to my Instagram and things at the bottom. Of course, if you enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe because it's a huge help to my to my channel. Anyway, let's get going. So today I'm, I'm in a sort of an A4, sorry, A4, A5 sketchbook, which is cold pressed. Um, I'm just going to start by using a 0.2mm fine liner. It's quite a busy scene, but what we're going to do is just focus on sort of my normal wobbly lines, catching the essence of it, add, subtract a few things, see what we feel like. Uh, I'm going to start towards the middle here, um, because that just helps me ground where we are. So I'm starting with that closest red brick house that you can see, and just go up and get the shape of this chimney in and this the height the size of this building is going to set the size of everything else so from here we can bring in this next roof line and again just being purposefully nice and wobbly brings a sort of atmosphere having these wobbly lines i think at least it prevents you from feeling the need to be perfect um, in a village scene like this, an old sort of very English, so Wheat Hampstead is a very sort of classic English village. Um, it really just accentuates that atmosphere, lots of classic sort of slate roofs and things. You'll notice as well, I'm not really taking my pen off the page very much, I haven't done so yet, and I will avoid, or not quite avoid, but um, I just won't want to for a while because. When you leave your pen on the page, it joins everything up. Everything becomes, you know, it's forced to become a simpler shape. Okay, so we're still moving forward. We've got the next roof line coming in here. And you can see just what I'm doing is uh, sort of in my head, measuring relative proportions and then working out. So I knew this. For example, I knew this line had to come into this roof halfway up, which is how I know how long the whole line here has to be, because if there's half of it, then we have to go again. I knew that this roof starts just in front of here, so that's how I knew to come up there and go forward. And it's just about looking for those reference points. Same here, this roof is halfway along this chimney. So just always looking at those reference points that we can use to measure. So, for example, now I could bring this lamppost up because I can see that it's about halfway along the um, this sort of that edge of the roof I've just done, and just get a nice dramatic-looking lamppost, and that come all the way down, and it finishes just below all these lines. Then we can come back up and bring the rest of this roof down and then this just to plug the bakery again this is actually loafing bakery um, soon to be featuring my artwork so <laughs> do go and check them out I think they've already got some of it framed in their bakery as well so already featuring I'm going to claim I haven't I haven't checked but already featuring some of my artwork I'm going to say uh, and then just bring the front of that down and can't go down there because I've got my clip on, but that's fine. Now I'm going to come back to this building and just get some more of these important shapes and things in. I've got a big window here. And you'll see this, I've squiggled up just to join things up, but that line already fades, already fades into the background. So that's why just joining things like that is absolutely fine. We then got a car, a van rather, coming in here. 
it could be quite fun. It just contextualizes what we've got going on. Now my tip for drawing vans and cars is um, be brave, number one. Number two, key features really just make it immediately obvious what it is and they are sort of uh, the, the lights rear and front lights and the other one is just be really careful of the perspective um, it's a box but it's ne almost never just straight on to you so it, it can be easy to just get that perspective wrong and it instantly looks weird whereas if you just focus a little bit get those key features in and instantly, very quickly, got something which is quite convincingly, to me at least, quite convincingly, a uh, van. We can get some of these other fun shapes in the front as well if we just sort of sketch out loose shapes of tables, chairs. You can't really see them that well, so we know that if you can't see them that well in the photo, they definitely don't need to be sort of perfectly sketched. There's a little fence coming in the back here, so I'm just marking in some texture to make up, make that obvious. Now let's get back to our initial reference point. So with these roofs, it's important just to have a to sense check um, when you're doing the the line coming across. How long is it, and what's its angle? So this one is angling slightly down, and it's really not as long as your brain thinks it is. And then this comes up and gets narrower towards the top and you get a tiny bit of roof line in there and then we've got halfway up again just using sort of relative measurements we've got our, our next chimney and then another chimney which almost is at the creek at uh, the peak sorry crest and i'm going to bring this down and again, we can use relative measurements. So we can see this window is very slightly higher than the other window. So I know it has to start here. And then it gets lost on some cars, which we don't know if we're including yet or not. And we've got a, a door, I think. It could be another window. And we've got some shrubs, which come round. And then we've got the front of this house, which is lost behind more shrubs and a wall. So just just some wavy lines to simulate that. What we can do is add in rough window and door lines and then head back to this house and again just purposefully being sketchy and joining up the lines and then using our relative measuring again we can bring our next roof up it comes like that and then comes down and then it's got a, another so it must have its roof its attic converted just in the process of buying a house if i haven't moaned about it enough on this channel on my instagram so i'm looking into conservatories conversions what kind of thing can we do to a house so yeah these must be uh, roof conversions by all accounts, the attic conversion rather isn't the best one to do. Um, at least not the first thing you would do because of energy efficiency. Anyway, enough of this nonsense. So I'm just sketching in these shapes. They're just uh, sort of squares with triangles attached to them, which just come nearly to the top of our roof. And I think they're effective enough. We've got some fun, long... Um, TV aerials coming at the top, so we'll add them in. And then we've got probably, I think this is our last roof to get in. And it's got a funny triangular shape again. And if we just bring that down to the front of the house, we can then pop in what must be the side of a building before moving on to our more foreground building here, which is just going to frame the edge of our image. So that's where the where the um, sign is. And then again, relative measurements, so we can see the edge of the building is down here. 
and then this beam comes across and angles slightly upwards comes down a bit more and then we've got again if we measure across that's correct it's the the shoulder of this person here uh, is just below the the van so we know we're in the right place to just sketch in these people and if you've seen my channel you've probably have seen my little video of how to sketch people in a sort of simple way and the idea is they're just simple shapes they're a circle a sort of oblong and a triangle and then you've got in seconds something easy recognizable as a person and then the other the other sort of tip which is relevant just now is adding in a little detail can really help so if we just get that tie in for example and we've got this person's bag looping over it just gives them a little bit of context as a human as well as well as a sort of abstract figure and then we've got lots of windows here so we can just get those marks loosely in and the top of the roof comes steeply angling there's a little I don't know what you call it frontage or something up there then we've got some other people walking behind you just get those in loosely and there's a bollard we can set in to then bring our pavement along the side of so now we've obviously got this big void I'm going to avoid it avoid it there you go bit of a plan I'm going to avoid it for a, a short while longer whilst we just get some more details in here a little bit of roof texture I sort of stopped in the middle of this roof so we can bring that across and resolve it there pop in a nice chimney again these just wobbly lines for chimneys for me are all good enough um, you can spend longer on them if you want or less time or avoid them completely whatever you feel your image needs so we just have a little bit of time concentrating on where our shop fronts come down and separating out some of these buildings and what I'm not going to do here is strictly follow every shop front. I'm just taking hints from what is there and deciding, you know, I'll add an extra window here, another shop front, whatever really, just to fill this space before deciding how many of these cars to put in. Uh, let's start with the one at the front. So it's level with the middle of that van and these people and it needs to fill quite a big space so it's going to have to fill at least this area just measuring against what we've got so if we just draw in the, the back windscreen and again if you just watch this come to life he says overconfidently pop in the wheels and then if I just pop in something which looks a bit like lights and the same there and then if I'm just careful with the perspective like I said before and then another feature a big wing mirror you just watch this little set of shapes become just definitely a car very quickly the other things which are obvious are having a, a number plate and we can add a couple of little other things as well there we go and from there we can work out our next car so if we there's a big pavement here so I'm going to use the pavement as another marker and then we can start to pop in our next car which is a 4x4 four Again, just got the wheel, got the light. I'm 
I'm just extending it to make it fit the gap here. I may have got my sort of casual measurements of the um, width of the road wrong or something, but that's fine because we can change the image to be whatever we want. So I'm going to have to pop in another light there. So again, we've got something which is definitely a car, which now fills the road. If we just bring these shop fronts down a little bit, because we've now got the edge of the pavement, we sort of can, can measure it up against everything. And we can just work out, do we want any more cars? Yeah, let's put in a couple more. And as they get stacked sort of further back, we just put in less and less detail because the context of what they are is given to us by these other vehicles. We don't need to, to have loads of details to see things in the back of cars, even just a few lines like that. Squiggles just Im heavily implies car, at least it does to me. This white space to me needs something, so we'll pop in these road markings and just some sort of textures across the front. Same here, just need something to fill that space. And then where I've not got any cars, so you can't actually see these edges in the photo because of the cars, but I've not, not popped them all in. So we're just going to have to make up a few details. But again, you can just take them from elsewhere and pop them in. Doesn't really matter. So I just added in a pavement. This is sort of bizarrely blank. So let's just add the, a bit of texture. Okay. So that is pretty much the line drawing done, I would say. Quite a lot of detail. I've left out some things. I've left out there's some people on this side, but we've got some nice people here. Um, just probably need to bring the pavement around there. Just sort of settles the image a bit here. But yeah, that's uh, I think plenty of line work. What what else haven't I done? I haven't done these trees in the background. I think if we added them, it would get very busy. Um, we can hint them with a little bit of colour. Actually, well, there's always one more thing to do, isn't there? So one more thing I do want to do is just make it obvious that these are windows. There's lots of ways you could do it. You could be very careful and draw them out. I'm just going to add in these sort of squiggles. You know, we know they're windows now. And I can add a little bit of shape to some of these. I quite like sometimes just having these 3D images and, and chimneys almost being caricatures on top. So these are very 2D and these are very much just squiggles. That's what I mean by caricatures. Uh, just debating, there's a nice light in the middle here. I think I'm going to add it. Just deciding where. So it's, it's a zebra crossing. So it's going to have to be somewhere we can't see the road. So if I let's go bring it to about here, and that'll do. And that'll be a nice point of lightness of or brightness in our image. And then there's always just a few more details that you might want to add or or what. But it is important to um, not overdo it. So I'd, I do need to stop very soon, is what I'm telling myself. Let's stop there. So now the colour. This is a sort of loose, wobbly image. There's lots of little details, but they're suggestions. These people are all suggestions. These cars are all suggestions. We don't, what well, the last thing I personally want to do is overpower this image with lots of color. It's also a very British uh, sort of foggy gray day. So I want to get a little bit of that suggestion. Again, I this is how I often paint. I don't clean out my, um, my palette. Uh, I will perhaps during the painting clean up bits when I want a clean colour, but actually you can get a lot of interesting murkiness from just 
using what's left over the re residual paint from your last session. And I paint often with a very similar palette and everything. So let's see how this goes. What I've mixed here is a bit of indanthrone blue, which you can see there, and some moon glow, and a heap of water. And this is going to be that murkiness in our sky. This is going to be, by the way, a very loose wash. And you don't have to be this loose, but it's what I enjoy doing the most. So it's what I'm going to do. And I want that can be nice in this style, I think, is to just bring that loose wash from the sky and just let it pool into the road. And then also this pub, the bull, is in shadow, as are these people. So we just bring it down over them. And suddenly our sky and our buildings are all connected. Now, we just move move on cautiously into the buildings and I'm taking hints from the image rather than painting the colours that are definitely there, if you see what I mean. So I'm not going to try and paint the exact colours but I want it to have the feel of what's there. So this red is nice. What I've done, I've mixed a, a scarlet red in with this murky mixture. Again, loads of water and there you go, just drop it in. And we can bring that into a couple of other buildings as well. And many of the other buildings are white, so let's try leaving them alone for a bit and see what happens when we bring in colour to elsewhere. So this is a Van Dyke brown, it's just a deep brown, which I think will be a nice way of just showing that these roofs are a sort of deeper colour. I'm going to mix that with some indanthrone blue, which should give us a nice grey. And just keep pulling that across. And up to there. Now I've just noticed that I didn't bring that sky across as far as I wanted. But what we can do is we can just fill it in with that mix we've got. And again, just pull these colours down so they pull down at the bottom. And we're going to keep just layering gently until essentially we get bored of it. I'm um, probably not going to use many more colours, but I'm going to so just layer in some more of that grey here. And then what I'm going to do is add some highlights. So while it's still wet, in a little while, we'll get some highlights in. So again, this is just different, varying the, the blue and the Van Dyke. We can bring that red, if I just get a bit more of it. Oh. There we go. We bring that into some of these cars. So it's become quite a purple car. We can leave some of them uh, sort of white, and then we can just pop a bit of moon glow in and let it move around. Now I'm going to get a little bit more intense colour and start getting in some shadows. I wanted that more brown, well more grey rather, less blue. So some of these shadows under the cars can come in. And again just looking where the shadows are. So certainly this roof's in shadow. We're just Everything's still nice and wet. Still flowing together. We can come into the sky again, I think. If we get a bit of just cobalt and mix it in. I'm actually going to wash my brush because I want it lighter than that. There we go. And we can just bring out some areas of this sky. And I did say we'd hint at some trees. So if I pick up a green, for me this is a cascade green, but whatever green, and just pop that into some of these gaps, just loosely letting it run into the sky. Maybe you want some more intense greens, you drop in a, a blob and let it spread, do its thing. That green can come down here as well, because remember we've got little um, bushes and things going on there. Now, 
what else do we need? So this, well, this is all nice and wet. We can drop in, like I said, these colors, which are just going to flow and merge. And I'm trying to convince you that these little dots are not just important, but pretty. And it will lift the image from all this just gloominess I've painted elsewhere. So that's just uh, a sort of primary red, Scarlet Lake. And here is a Hansa yellow. So these obviously are the, the lights of the cars. Let me just drop them in. And you'll get sort of reflections on the ground. And then some of these windows can have lights in as well. You can see this window in the actual image has lights. Get a little bit more of our red. That can come into some of the windows as well. And onto the ground here. And it's all just for me about making this nice and fluid and just interesting to look at. And you might get some really dark windows as well. So I'm going to get some moon glow. This is still just painting with loads and loads of water. Oh, we've mixed into our light, that's all right. What I'll do, I'll just get a little bit of paper Block that out and come back to it later when it's a bit drier. I might actually, saying that, just pop our yellow back in because that's the most important thing there. Get a bit more moon grey on my brush. Start bringing these contrasty areas in now. So we worked all the, the shapes, the colours, made it nice and loose. And now it's just time to take a little hint from the image, for me at least this is what I like doing, and start adding in those areas of contrast and deep shadow and things like that. And just varying things, so just popping a little bit of cobalt in that moon glow to give it some variation. Maybe we want to pop a little bit of yellow in as well. Same here. Maybe mix all together and a little spot of orange, just getting that idea of a glow coming. Again, these, these chairs and things are great places which might have um, bright colors. So, And while these people are very dark, gee, I'm gonna try a bit of moon glow first. And then I might just pop some other colours in, some bit of cobalt, bit of yellow. Okay. So where have we? Where sort of looks lacking? So some of these windows could could come out a bit. This roof looks suspicious to me and then it's always for me nice to have some of our chimneys standing out they already look like little caricatures so just popping bits of color onto them even when it just flows and moves I think is really nice And just dropping in some of these colours to provide some accidental textures. Yeah, and it might, you know, you might feel it might ruin it or whatever, but this style of painting is all about producing something interesting and mostly under your control. Mm, not even mostly. Partly, you shape what will happen by understanding your colours. So I know that moon glow separates really interestingly. I know that this yellow is quite flat when it separates. I know that the red likes to spread a lot. So I, I sort of have an idea of what might happen. Um, and I try and use that sort of foreknowledge to my benefit. 
but I also know that some of the effects will be unexpected and in many ways that might be the best thing about the whole image the interest you get from that I'm fully aware that this sort of very loose painting isn't to everyone's taste but I hope that this kind of experimentation or at least just watching me do it can um, give you a few ideas about things you might take risks on in your paintings so I'm not sure about that yellow I thought it might add an interesting highlight to the sky but the nice thing about watercolour is I can just lift it I'm going to just go back in with a little bit of cascade green again just to hide that shameful experience I just produced there we go I think uh, for now that's done I'll let it dry and then see if there's any finishing touches we want to add hello so this is now mostly dry you can see a couple of little wet patches but that's fine and so what can we do next to just lift it a little bit well first I'm going to go back in with a fine liner I'm going to choose, choose a slightly bigger one a 0.5 uh, 0.5 millimeters that is Ooh. Bear with me while I get it working. There we go. Um, and we'll just bring out some of these shapes again, which can get lost behind the chaos of lovely loose colours. So you're just going to start with some outlines and see what it looks like when we've done that. And again, you'll notice not really taking the pen off. No excuse now because we've already got all the lines in. So we don't need to take the pen off at all, really. And I'm just getting these big shapes in, separate the sky from the, from the land. And then we can just resolve some of what's down here as well. When it's a bit wet, what can happen, just need to be cautious, is that your pen can decide briefly if it runs through a wet patch, it's not going to function for you. So just be aware of that. Okay. Don't want to overdo it here because we, we've got these really nice fluid colours and too much line work can detract from them when the, the colours are detracted from the line work and you end up in this situation where you completely overwork what's on the page. Let's just make sure the sign's nice and obvious and perhaps what we can do is we can just separate these cars a little bit as well. So that they're a bit a bit more graphic, they sort of sit forward for you. You can bring in these squiggled car-esque shapes a little bit more as well. Maybe the same for our van. Okay. Now one other thing I've noticed is that it's not obvious this is a pavement edge because it looks too similar to these road markings. So if we just redouble them and just get that shape in by getting a couple of lines I think that's a bit more effective which is good and I think things have just lifted and we've still got these nice globby patterns everywhere now I want to lift some of the, these highlights forward um, and what I'm going to use is some watercolour pencils but equally valid is to use uh, your, your normal watercolours. I'm just going to get some of these highlights that we had picked out. So this is just a tiny bit of cobalt blue and just areas where we sort of popped in our highlights before we can use this to just emphasize them and add a little bit of texture. Um, what I'm doing off camera is just dipping it in water and what that does is it sort of pre-activates the colour and makes it super bold when you when you draw. You need to keep dipping it, otherwise it will settle. 
Okay, that's enough of the blue, but just dotting it in a few places gives these fun little highlights. I'm going to do the same with a red. This is a crimson lake, which is uh, somewhere between a sort of vermilion, sort of pinky magenta, and a primary red. And you can see we'll just be able to drop that in, add a little bit of shape and highlights to some of these chimneys, not all of them. We don't want it too uniform either. And around these lights, so the lights are sort of glowing wonderfully, but what we want is a bright center to the lights so that they're glowing from somewhere not just glowing some of these reds in the windows as well and again we don't want to go too far now I don't have I haven't sort of found a a yellow watercolor pen which a uh, watercolor pen watercolor pencil which is quite as effective um they they tend to the ones I found tend to need quite a bit of scrubbing and they, they act almost more like normal pencils. So for the, just bringing out those yellow highlights, just going to go traditional, use just our watercolour um, brush. <laughs> Always very good at my words, am I? And just, I think there's areas now we can also just bring out with some nice splashes. I noticed as we were doing the line work, I hadn't given this lamp a glow, but that's easily done. I think I've shown you this before on a video or two, but if you want to make another way of making splashes other than with your brush, well, still using your brush, but using a pencil, is just flick down. So you get your pencil and you can just gently flick and you get these much more cautious um, little bubbles of colour. And if I just to demonstrate a bit more, I can use a, a grey brush, or actually this is black, I think, um, brush, black pencil, ivory black. Let me just get a little bit of texture on some of these windows. Windows. Gosh, my words really are failing me. A bit of texture on some of these roofs and in these shadows. Yeah, we can also just drop in colour as well. And I might just darken these wheels just to provide a bit more convincing idea of um, what they are really. And we can pop in black shapes to suggest windscreens on our little shapes. I think um, that's enough anymore and it's going to become a bit overworked. So I'll let that dry and then I'll show you the, the finished piece and sort of try and talk through what we've done. And here we go. It's essentially dry. A few bits and bobs still drying, of course. And this is our fun loose expressive sketch of Wheat Hampstead. Um, so I hope that even if you're not one for doing things quite as loose as this, you you took something out of it. I imagine you did if you've got to watching this far. And we start off with a, a sort of wobbly sketch straight with ink and focused on just comparative measurements to get the proportions properly right. And then looked at getting things like cars and people in to add context and how we can do them in a shorthand way. So just wheels and lights, maybe a bumper, a bumper, a number plate. And these things just immediately tell your eye what you're looking at. And then suggestions of background, not having to put everything in. So these little blobs of green telling you there's something, it's not just a sky up there. And then using a very limited number of colours really to create shadows and shape and then highlights with essentially primary colours a bright red bright yellow and a few bits of of blue in there as well anyway thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video um, please do like and subscribe be great to hear your thoughts on this kind of sketching is it your cup of tea do you like doing it do you experiment like this and um, this is probably how i sketch most often so if you just take a look at the front of my sketchbook got similar things very loose uh, another 
slightly less loose and then at the very front as well a similar idea of something very loose so i enjoy this a lot and um, be interested to hear your thoughts anyway have a good rest of your day